Welcome back to Raw Reactions here at Trippy Commentaries. We are going to start off with an epic interview with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Every time those guys open their mouths, it's always something shocking. We saw Brock Lesnar just kick the living crap out of John Cena and apparently Cena wants a rematch right away. We'll see what Lesnar thinks about it. I'm RJ, joined as always by Retro Brett and C-Dub. Corey, this interview was pretty damn cool. I love to hear these guys talk, like I just said. And uh, Brock Lesnar, once again, is pretty confident he's going to whoop Cena's ass all over again. Oh yeah, this was, uh, in my opinion, as well as uh, sounds like yours, a very effective video package interview segment. Uh, with comments from the WWE champion Brock Lesnar and his advocate Paul Heyman uh, regarding his performance against John Cena at SummerSlam. Paul Heyman told John Cena flat out that he has made the biggest mistake of his life by asking for the rematch for the title at Night of Champions. Uh, we heard some more very heated comments from Brock Lesnar here. He basically vowed to completely eradicate John Cena from the WWE Universe, hopefully for good, in his words. Guys, I can't see any other outcome except for Brock Lesnar getting his hand raised in this big championship rematch in Nashville. Yeah, it was interesting to see this interview because earlier in the night we had John Cena come out with the Legends and show he is really confident, show that, hell, he has a chance to win. But then <laughs> this interview almost kind of rained on that parade and made me think all over again, uh-oh, Cena's in for another beating. Well, talk is cheap, actions speak louder than words. So mm -hmm. judging by, all we have to judge by is last pay-per-view's actions. And <sighs> judging by that, yeah, he's looking at another ass whooping. But he might actually have another trick up, up his sleeve this time. We'll mm -hmm. see later in the night. Yeah, lucky us. We actually got to see him fight tonight in a pretty interesting matchup, one we, we always love to see. It's an old favorite, and we'll be getting to that here shortly. The uh, Intercontinental Champion, Dolph Ziggler, had a matchup with The Miz, Another matchup we're familiar with, but one we're not quite so fond of. We all love Dolph, but The Miz. Lucky us, it wasn't actually The Miz. It was The Miz's stunt double, and uh, I was kind of happy to see that, actually. Fine, why not? Let's see uh, Damian uh, Mizdow fight against Dolph Ziggler. To no surprise, Dolph knocked him out with the zigzag. Corey, what did you think about that match? Uh, it's always great to see Dolph Ziggler out there. Uh, I wasn't looking forward to Dolph versus The Miz in the uh, non-title rematch necessarily. And uh, once I found out it would be Damian Sandow as The Miz's stunt double, I cared even less. All this aside, Ziggler is one of the most athletic guys WWE has under contract. Week in, week out, he makes his opponents look great, uh, look great and he shines himself every single match. Uh, the Miz was on commentary during the match. Zigzag for the 1-2-3. Ziggler wins. We're going to have another rematch for the Intercontinental title at Night of Champions. Ziggler versus Miz again. Retro Brett, who do you see coming out on top? Whoa there, Corey. It was Damian Mizdow, not Damian Sandow. But, um... Yeah, big difference. Oh, gosh. Uh, that'll take some time to think about. I think we'll have to wait on... Wait for our predictions for that. Um, Night of Champions predictions. My early early front runner is probably the Miz. I just don't see them uh, giving Ziggler uh, the title for very long. They're going to keep it on the annoying bastard. So, yeah. yeah. Or they're going to put it back on him. What do you think about the matchup uh, here? I know it was just Damian Sandow, Miz but uh, <laughs> Dave, Dolph Ziggler. Did get an impressive win. I always like to see the zigzag. Oh yeah, the zigzag's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, pretty sweet finisher there. Now, the next segment was an all-time low uh, in some cases. <laughs> uh, Jerry Lawler apparently is making a bid to be the new Jerry Springer as he has uh, united Nikki and Brie Bella, Tried. everybody's favorite divas, uh, 
reality show uh, phenomenon here. Try to get them to uh, come back here, be uh, reunited as sisters. Apparently, Nikki's pissed off because Brie Bella was banging some of her boyfriends back in the day, among other things. Terrible segment. Who gives a flying fuck? Corey, do you have any words of wisdom that you can share with us about this pile of crap? Yeah, you, have, you said it, brother. It was a uh, it was probably the worst segment I've seen on WWE TV in quite some time. It was even worse than all of the Stephanie versus Brie segments. Uh, we saw the usual pathetic acting dialogue. Uh, the crowd reactions were none. Uh, Jerry Lawler got the biggest pop whenever he pulled the two apart. I could care less what happens with the Bella Twins. Uh, Retro Brett, do you have any thoughts? Uh, well, I, I will say that this segment went on for probably about five minutes too long, but I also will say that I see a um, tag, or tag, mixed tag team match between um, Damon Bryant, his wife Bree, along with John Cena and his future wife, Nikki Bella, hmm. but actually, no, that's a horrible idea. Yeah, nobody would still care about yeah. that. That was just joking. I don't know what the hell they're trying to accomplish with that storyline. That was terrible. Come on, WWE, you're better than that. Let's move on. Uh, this was the uh, big Kane and Seth Rollins matchup against Roman Reigns. It was a handicap match. i got to say, I was expecting Dean Ambrose to make an appearance and be the teammate for Roman Reigns, which would have made it a, a very epic match. Oh, that, that would have been sweet. Right? Yeah, all the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys there. Unfortunately, Dane, Dean Ambrose did not show up. It was a little bit surprising to see Kane fighting. Uh, as I mentioned in Part 1, he just came out with his uh, suit pants on and some wristbands or, or uh, something like that. And uh, it was an interesting matchup. Uh, they tried to get... Uh, Roman Reigns with the same thing that did in Dean Ambrose, the cinder block, curb stomp. Roman Reigns showed that he's too powerful to take that. He overcame it all. Corey, what'd you think about this matchup? Uh, I thought, you know, pretty much the same thing as you did. I thought it was going to set up a uh, possibly a return for Dean Ambrose, but I do like the fact that they're keeping Ambrose off of TV. And uh, really selling the fact that that attack last week was uh, was a big, uh, big, you know, a big hurdle for him to overcome as far as, uh, you know, in this feud against Seth Rollins. Hopefully tonight, he's still alive, c -Dub. Yeah, I hope so. Um, tonight we saw uh, in this handicap match, Roman went off, went after Seth Rollins immediately, spent most of the match beating on Rollins with Kane being a second threat, kind of cutting off his momentum. Uh, Reigns eventually overpowered the two-on-one odds, got the upper hand, apron drop kick to Kane, Reigns loads up the Superman punch, Kane reverses, Reigns hits the spear. As Reigns attempts to pin Kane for the victory, Seth hits Roman with the briefcase, causing a DQ. After the disqualification, the authority, Roman or uh, Seth Rollins and Kane, rather, continue the two-on-one assault on Reigns on the outside. Kane picks up the table just like last week to reveal a pile of cinder blocks. As Seth Rollins attempts to give Roman Reigns a curb stomp into the blocks, we saw Roman overpower both Kane and Seth, eventually ending in Seth dodging a cinder block that was thrown by Roman Reigns straight at his head. The segment ends with Kane being fed a massive Superman punch. Guys, Reigns is primed up and looks to be transitioning out of the Orton feud, perhaps, into a series here with Seth Rollins. Do you guys think we could maybe see a Night of Champions tag team match? Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose against uh, The Authority? That yes. would be cool. Uh, I would be down for that. Uh, wouldn't be for a championship match, oh, unfortunately, no, but not. definitely a worthy matchup. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe... If I could throw another monkey wrench into the situation, maybe... What are you thinking? Well, because Seth Rollins does hold money in the bank, so it's not for a title match, or it's not for a championship, but maybe the winners get the the briefcase? Oof, man. I, and they have to I don't know if Seth Rollins is going to be uh, willing to give that bad boy up. 
But uh, we'll see what happens. That's a pretty cool feud. I've been waiting for Roman Reigns to get pissed off at Seth Rollins and, and try to uh, step up to him. He's been busy with some other guys like Randy Orton. It looks like now they're finally going to collide. I can't wait to see what's going to happen on next week's Raw. Make sure to uh, join us the Tuesday following that, and we'll break that down as well as uh, we got your back when it comes to Raw. We'll recap every single edition every Tuesday morning. And uh, we'll definitely give you the best breakdown in the business. Uh, now we had the return of Slater Gator. Of course, Heath Slater and Titus O'Neil. But unfortunately, Corey, they lost. Yeah, they ended up uh, eating defeat from Los Matadores. I think Slater Gator is a pretty funny tag team. Uh, they're pretty good lower mid-card villains that... Uh, I feel like they get over as funny without it being like these forced comedy segments and gimmicks. Uh, they're just, it's kind of the, uh, the odd duo, the odd couple. Uh, I thought, I mean, to me, I think it's pretty funny. Like I said, I don't see them going much higher than the mid card, but, uh, they're definitely entertaining to see. Yeah. How about the, uh, Bo Dallas matchup? He claimed a victory himself. And, uh, of course, we saw him earlier in the night. So, uh, you know, uh, we, I think we all knew Jack Swagger might be making an appearance here with the Bo Dallas matchup. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we saw Bo Dallas take on Kofi Kingston uh, in a singles match. Bo attempted a handshake. Kofi denied it. He's not having any of uh, Bo Dallas's games. Kofi looked great tonight, uh, moving around the ring like a bolt of lightning as usual. Uh, in the end, Bo hit a uh, pretty botched running Bow Dog uh, off the ropes for the pinfall. I noticed that. That was terrible. Yeah, the big credit to Kofi Kingston there. I mean, uh, that could have gone really, really uh, much worse than it did. Uh, after the match, we got our usual post match Bo Leave promo. Of course, this time directed at Jack Swagger, who uh, showed up and chased Bo away. It looks like this Rusev feud is transitioning i mean it's it, swagger's kind of in between as i said in part one but uh i think we're gonna see a swagger versus bo dallas matchup here in the near future for sure retro brett anything to add about that matchup it wasn't too bad to see no. uh bo dallas and no, kofi no. kingston that was not i, I thought it was bad decent timing because it was later on in the night i thought that was a little bit odd but it was a decent matchup and, of course, we're transitioning into a Bo Dallas versus Jack Swagger rivalry. Well, usually, you know, as the night progresses, the matches and the segments get better. Mm -hmm. It's like save the best for last. Yeah, didn't uh, do that here. <laughs> hell no. But I will say, has anyone noticed the absence of Adam Rose mm -hmm. for the last yes. couple, couple weeks? Yeah, I couldn't be happier. Oh, but... no. Hopefully the bunny is okay. <laughs> No, but this matchup between uh, Kofi Kingston and uh, Bo Dallas was pretty decent. It was kind of quick, I thought, but, uh, you know, anything regarding Bo Dallas should be quick. <laughs> so I hear. Why, uh, when okay. will you learn to believe Retro Brett? Never. Never. Uh, all right. We'll see if uh, Bo Dallas can get a victory against Jack Swagger, because you'd have to admit that would be an impressive win for him. Jack Swagger... Despite the uh, you know the injury to the ribs, which has certainly lowered his fighting ability and storyline, he's still kind of built up as a capable fighter here. I would like to see Bo Dallas versus a healthy Jack Swagger. Uh, now for the main event, guys. John Cena here he is running out. Retro Brett, you actually wore that same exact shirt to Battleground yes, recently. I did. He faced off with Bray Wyatt. This was an excellent matchup we saw back at WrestleMania. And, uh, of course, uh, of course, plenty of times, basically. That was just a long-going <laughs> rivalry. Now, uh, I, I got to say, Brock, uh, I'm sorry, John Cena had a very interesting fighting style. It reminded me a little bit of Brock Lesnar's <laughs> fighting style. I don't think it's a coincidence. coincidence. Nope. Corey, break down this main event for us. Yeah, as you said, man, this was a huge rematch from WrestleMania 30 where Bray Wyatt sought to bring out the Beast in John Cena. And uh, apparently after losing to the Beast, Brock Lesnar, at SummerSlam, uh, Cena was looking to come back in his first televised match. 
uh, come out strong right out of the gate, and he most certainly did. Uh, he was relentless in his attack on the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. Uh, eventually, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan hit the ring to cause a disqualification. John Cena gets the victory here by DQ until the Big Show and Mark Henry hit the ring to even up the numbers three on three. And uh, tonight we got a bonus six-man tag team match. Big Show and Mark Henry teaming up with John Cena to bring the pain to the Wyatt family. We heard a pretty funny uh, sexual chocolate chant from Mark Henry from the Anaheim crowd. <laughs> it's nice to hear that people remember that uh, hilarious gimmick. Uh, there was a great job tonight of everybody involved of working the hot tags. Cena was actually getting some pretty positive reactions tonight uh, in response to the more uh, aggressive attack, more varied offense, and it's a little bit less methodical of a style that it seems like he's going to employ against Brock Lesnar. The Wyatts seem to take control when John Cena gets the last hot tag, plows through the Wyatts like a tornado through a trailer park. Cena locks on the STF on Luke Harper, who has no choice but to tap out. But in the end, Cena was not satisfied with just the victory as he delivered attitude adjustments to both Rowan and Harper before Big Show and Mark Henry bring Bray Wyatt back to the ring to get one for himself as he tried to escape. Guys, John Cena actually had me convinced at the end of the night here that he does have a shot at at Night of Champions in Nashville against the champ Brock Lesnar. But I got to say, uh, he's still coming in as a massive underdog. Yeah, he's got a shot to at least uh, give him a chance this time instead of getting completely obliterated. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I was a little bit disappointed that there was no Bray Wyatt intro here, The you know, the, the intro where he says, you know, of course, in this case, right. Anaheim, I'm here, comes out with the followers. That's one of my favorite intros going right now. Instead, it just did the, you know, the loud noise that they always do. Oh, that, and then I he appeared that. in the, <laughs> he appeared in the ring, which was cool. But I'm just such a big fan of the intro. I, I kind of miss that. I like the intro music, but the little noise. Uh, <laughs> it's the eerie. It's eerie. It's creepy. But, uh, yeah, John Cena coming out fighting just like Brock Lesnar, doing the German suplexes. He was Brock Cena tonight. Really <laughs> thought he was going to completely destroy the competition, but he did need Mark Henry and the Big Show to come out to help him out. Mark Henry did make an appearance. We were wondering where he was with the Rusev segment earlier. He did show up, so that was good to see him. Definitely can't wait to see this tag team in action even more, I think, they could win the tag team championship here. They're that big, that good. And uh, Harper tapped out to Cena. Cena gets the victory. Well, I believe we're going to see uh, Mark Henry and Big Show versus the Wyatt followers this Friday. Is that correct there, Corey? Uh, I I seem to remember that, uh, yeah, we, we may end up seeing that on SmackDown this week. Um, yes, and as regards to, uh, yeah, Cena, Cena showed a lot of, he was pissed. And he got em he was got embarrassed last pay per view and mm -hmm. rightly so but so he was a house on fire but I'm still very he's my boy but I'm still very very skeptical as to how much how big his chances are against Brock Lesnar. Hey, the Hulkster believes in him. He must have a chance. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of our WWE Raw reactions. This is going to be another epic pay-per-view upcoming, guys. They're doing a good job building it. They still have some time. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we definitely have another big episode of Raw Reactions coming up soon. Uh, yes, uh, next week on Raw, uh, Jericho's going to host his highlight reel with uh, uh, Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. Yeah, so, definitely uh, looking too. forward to that. Yeah, be sure to tune in next week. Corey, are you looking forward to the big highlight reel? Chris Jericho hosting it with Randy Orton. Oh, man, I'm always looking forward to seeing Y2J. It'll be interesting to see where Randy Orton stands moving forward. He's uh, sort of up in the air. It seems like the Roman Reigns feud is pretty much concluded. It'll be interesting to hear from Randy Orton. Perhaps he and Jericho may be squaring off soon. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to next week's Raw Reactions, as always. Guys, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, like, share, tell your friends, 
where to come on YouTube to find the best WWE coverage right here at Trippy Commentaries. For RJ, Retro Brett, and myself, C-Dub, guys, stay tuned and stay trippy. Brothers. Hit, hit the like button, guys.